The Crow Pi L from Elecro is the most competent Raspberry Pi laptop yet, and it comes preloaded with Python and Scratch tutorials to easily learn hardware programming. But is it enough? And do you really want a Raspberry Pi powered laptop? I'm James Bruce, reviews editor for makeuseof.com. Join me as we take a closer look at the Crow Pi L. The Crow Pi L costs about $200 by itself, but this is just a shell and it doesn't actually include the Raspberry Pi 4, which is essential for this to work. Now, bear in mind that there are supply constraints at the moment. If you want to add a Raspberry Pi to your Elecro order, it costs at least $120 or $150 for the eight gigabytes model, I believe. However, you can source your own Pi locally, of course, and add it in if you're able to. So I actually ended up gutting the Raspberry Pi 4 out of the Crow Pi 2 that I reviewed uh, last year, in fact. Now you can either use the eight gigabytes or four gigabyte RAM model, not a problem. If you're getting into this to learn electronics and uh, programming, which is, let's face it, the whole purpose of this, then the advanced kit includes the Crowtail starter kit. So this is a bunch of electronic sensors which then plug on to this board here. So basically in total, you're looking at around $250 plus the cost of a Pi, which is gonna vary depending on where you are or whether you already have one. It does, however, include everything else you'll need from power supply to preloaded SD card uh, and even a wireless mouse. Installation is relatively simple, but not quite as simple as just slotting the Raspberry Pi into the back as I had hoped it might be. Instead, you'll want to first fit some screws on, which then allow it to magnetically join with the case. Now, supposedly the magnetic design makes it easier to fit, but you still need to fit the screws to the Raspberry Pi anyway to make it magnetic. So why not just screw it in the first place? You'll also want to add the HDMI board on the side, hook that into the USB port using a finicky little ribbon cable, plug in the nifty dual boot uh, SD card board and then the SD card supplied, then push fit all of that into the Crow Pi L. It was actually a bit tricky to get it to fit in and the whole process is not something I would let your children do. You're not done yet either. You'll also need to push in the GPIO and fan board, which connects in turn to the case. And then also presumably though not mentioned in the manual as far as I could see, uh, push in this wider ribbon cable. After that, you're done. So there is certainly an element of DIY to this. From there, you just need to plug in the USB-C cable and the power adapter and then uh, power on. And you'll be welcomed by this bright startup screen where you can jump straight into learning. Now you can either press the F1 key to activate the tiny built-in trackpad uh, awkwardly placed at the top of the keyboard here, or you can use an external mouse which is supplied. It's a bit natty, needs an AA battery. Neither is ideal, but they work. Speaking of hardware, the keyboard is also a little bit nasty. It's functional, but it has a very low key travel. Um, it feels like a bit of a plasticky, cheap iPad keyboard. It's certainly not something I would want to code on for a long time, and though I did follow along with a lot of the courses, I found myself making far more errors than I'm comfortable with. Now, there's little point in talking about the RAM, GPU, and CPU specs of this laptop because that's gonna come from the Raspberry Pi 4 that you put in it. And presumably if a more powerful Pi is released at some point with the same Pi 4 footprint, uh, that should also be compatible. The Crow Pi L part of the equation then is a monitor, case, USB port hub, battery, fan, and keyboard. So it's only the footprint of the Pi board that matters in terms of specifications. It would, of course, be a pretty useless laptop without a battery. So you'll find a 5,000 milliamp hour uh, battery inside of this charging over USB-C. As I said, a suitable adapter is included and the battery should run for about three hours. Now that's not a huge amount of time clearly, but realistically, this is not a laptop for a road warrior to do actual work on. The screen is an 11.6 inch 1366 by 768 pixel. Uh, so really quite compact and not something you'd want to watch media on either, although general web browsing is fine. Now I've mentioned the oddly placed uh, trackpad 
Alongside that, you'll also find a GPIO pin diagram. Now, disappointingly, it doesn't light up. I don't know why I think it would, but it's literally just a reference sheet. I was kind of hoping it would also indicate when a pin was active or high signal, which would then help with, you know, debugging when your program didn't work. But no, it's literally just a diagram, albeit quite a useful one. Now from first boot, you'll be thrown straight into a selection of tutorials. There are two different hardware courses to follow, either the more basic Let's Code, which is a graphical scratch-based interface for younger kids, or using Python, uh, written code, which is not my first choice of programming language, but it's a good entry-level language to use. I tried a selection of both of these Let's Codes and uh, Python tutorials, and apart from a hardware error where I found GPIO Pin 6 was unresponsive, everything else was really easy to follow along. The tutorials are simple enough. At some point, I did find myself doing things differently, like using loops earlier than I was supposed to, maybe, uh, but the coding tutorials only offer a guide as to what you need to do. They don't strictly force or check what you're doing one way or the other, as some systems do. And I much prefer it this way because you're free to experiment or move things around and get the outcome in a better way. I do remember testing a kid's programming toy earlier this year that literally demanded you drag and drop the interface blocks in a specific order. If you happened to add the last one first, even if the end sequence was identical, it wouldn't let you proceed. And it was horrendously infuriating. Not so with this. The lessons here also offer a good bit of challenge, I thought. Each mission has a sort of extended try-it-yourself section. In terms of whether it's suitable for children, I also had a go with my eight-year-old son, and it certainly needed supervision. But other than that, I think he basically got it. Some of the interface can be a bit fiddly at times, and the small screen means that you can't really have both the instructions and the coding app open at the same time. So you're going to need to constantly swap back and forth between the two if you need a lot of reference. You can, however, plug in an external monitor as well if you want. So how does the CrowPi L compare to the CrowPi 2? I really liked the Crow Pie 2 because of, well, let's face it, nostalgia for those sort of 70-in-1 electronics kits that I had as a kid. Underneath the Bluetooth keyboard were all of these components hardwired to the machine itself, which is ultimately a lot less flexible, but certainly felt more magical than the Crow Pie L does. It feels like more of a self-contained, all-in-one learning kit, and aesthetically it just looked cooler. That said, the battery-powered Bluetooth keyboard and trackpad that this came with was pretty horrible, and you often got connectivity issues. So having it as an actual laptop hardwired keyboard is definitely better from the whole Raspberry Pi as a laptop perspective. I just think it's lost some of the magic. The Crow Pi 2 was an electronics kit within a laptop for convenience. This, on the other hand, is just a Raspberry Pi laptop, which you then add an electronics kit to. And while the Crow Pi L is probably the best Raspberry Pi laptop implementation we've seen yet, in the broader computing sense, it's not a particularly good laptop. I mean, for $250, you could buy a more capable Chromebook or even pick something secondhand up off of eBay that's more powerful than a Raspberry Pi and then add GPIO access with a USB Arduino or something similar, throw Linux on it, and essentially you've got the same thing minus the lesson structure. The whole point of a Raspberry Pi is, well, was, that it's a low-cost, accessible computing system, easily hackable, that can be embedded, great for learning. But if you have to pay $120 for the Raspberry Pi, plus another $200 for the laptop case, that's not really low cost anymore. While the concept of a Raspberry Pi laptop is a great keyword to catch those precious YouTube views, in reality it just doesn't make sense. If you're buying this for classroom use or even at home, you probably don't need a battery. And you might already have some old monitors that you could hook up to a Raspberry Pi. In fact, Elecro even touts the ability to add a second monitor as a feature. You might as well add a bigger keyboard while you're at it, and you're already using an external mouse. Do you see where I'm going with this? 
at that point, you don't need the laptop part of the equation at all. So then we come to the big question, is this the right electronics learning kit, uh, the whole thing as a package for you? I think what Elecro have tried to do here is to make a neat and tidy uh, consumer-friendly Raspberry Pi laptop that also works with their Crotail sensor system, which is itself a great accessible way to wire in sensors and components without messing around with soldering or uh, other headaches that typically come with learning electronics. This isn't the first time I've used the Crotail system, and it's great. So while I can't fault the Crow Pi L laptop for anything in particular, nothing is fundamentally broken or wrong. It is a laptop. It does work from a Raspberry Pi. It does have a battery uh, and a functional keyboard and a sort of trackpad and a screen. It's just not a particularly good uh, laptop on its own. If you are looking for a Raspberry Pi laptop specifically, uh, it probably isn't because you want a stylish modern looking laptop that just happens to run on a Raspberry Pi, otherwise you would literally just put Linux on a laptop. It doesn't need to be this sort of immaculate white friendly case. If anything, it should be the complete opposite. I feel like someone who wants an actual Raspberry Pi laptop is probably looking for something that looks a little bit more DIY and cobbled together. Perhaps even a translucent or neon acrylic case so you can see the internals. Some GPIO connected RGB LEDs on the exterior for you to program as you wish, or even a little notification LCD screen. Small and portable, but with obviously replaceable battery pack that uses standard 18650s. The screen I can forgive, but this keyboard really could have been mechanical. A Raspberry Pi laptop should be an insane looking cyber deck that wouldn't look out of place uh, in the hacker's movie. And you can have that idea for free, Elecro. All right, that's it from me. I hope I told you what you need to know about the Crow Pi L and whether it's right for you. Hit like if this video helped, ask away in the comments. If not, if you have some other questions that I didn't address and I'll try my best to help you down there. Also, please consider subscribing for more weekly reviews, gadget giveaways, and more from all of us over at makeuseof.com. Until next time.